Hello once again, and you are very welcome to this mass tutorial class presented to you by O3 Schools Jam app. Now, O3 Schools Jam app is, well, quite known as one of the very best jam apps you could possibly have as a student preparing to take jam. But why is it so special? What makes it different from the rest? What makes O3 Schools Jam app stand out? Well, for one, it doesn't just have your past questions like every other app does it also has different ways of navigating these past questions which makes it so much fun for example um while trying to answer your past questions you could go through just you know study mode where you can look at the questions and the answers and go from year to year you could also go through mock mode or exam mode in which you're actually going to be given time constraints and you answer these questions as though it's your actual jam and you get to see your score and so you could do this on your phone your computers you can do it on your computers because it gives you basically a very good idea of what you'll be seeing on the day of your jam let's know how the system work and how to navigate the interface which we have to use to answer your questions on the day of jam but not just can you answer you can actually choose how you answer you can increase your time you can reduce your time you could um Change the number of subjects, choose your subjects you like. You could even choose topics within subjects. So say you've already part of that topic and you want to just you know see how good you are on that topic. You could choose just that topic, and the app gives you only questions pertaining to the topic or topics within the subject that you've chosen. So you see that's already a very, very wonderful feature. But in addition, there's also one which I love the question search feature. With the question search feature, you can actually search for questions using keywords or phrases. Basically, you saw a question a long time ago, you couldn't answer it, but now you're ready. But you can't remember what year or what number. You don't have to stress yourself. You go to the question search feature and choose the subject and type in anything you remember from that question. Any special word. And once you type it in, the app brings out every question that has that keyword in it. So you can actually sort it through or rather sort through it quite easily as opposed to trying to you know check your entire past question for a particular question so your school job app has a lot to offer you get it and you will not regret it though of course after downloading and installing you have to activate now activation costs the simple fee of 2500 naira only simply that's what you need get your three schools jam app activate it for this amount there are different steps to activate you could use your bank transfer which once you're done simply have to send the receipts to the phone number which you see within your app or you could also use paying online that is basically through pay stack a secure payment method they use your atm card to pay and the app gets instantly activated for you so there are so many ways you can do it don't waste time. Get to three schools jam app. Activate it, and my friend will be on the way to scoring very well on your jam. And with that, today's mask class we shall be looking at statistics. What is statistics? Statistics basically has to do with um, whenever you have to analyze a group of data, basically. Instead of dealing with individual fragments of data, whenever you have several of them, you know you have to do with statistics. Statistics helps you analyze, categorize large groups of data. However, when analyzing, there's something they call groups data and discrete data. And in the case of JAM, JAM prefers tackling discrete data. For example, in groups data, when the things become so many, like can no longer list individuals. For example, you are looking at, let's say, um, amounts people have in the bank. Amounts people have in the bank. You cannot list each single amount individually. You cannot be saying category for those with exactly 5 Naira, those with 5.01 Naira, those with 5.02 Naira. Yes, that would be a losing battle. You have millions of categories. In that situation, that's where group data comes in. And instead, you could then say those with 0 to 100 Naira is one group. And then you can continue from there, 100 to 200 could be the next group, and so on and so forth. 
they say that's grouped data however jam doesn't tackle this often preferring to deal with discrete data and um within statistics there's two different things or two different ways we can be an analyzing these themes and we're going to be focusing on just one in this video which is measure of central tendency of course the other is measure of dispersion which you shall deal with in the subsequent video of now but i can simply add measure of central tendency and in measure of central tendency there are four key things one is mean the second is median the third is mode and the fourth is range so these are the four key variables or key parameters to look at in that measure of central tendency let's start and analyze them one by one what's mean the mean of a group of data simply refers to the average of those data quite simply that's all mean has to do with average and um it has a simple formula which is our mean represented by x with that bound it equals the summation of x over n that means the mean is the sum of all the different values divided by the number of values and since there is only numbers we can see it's quite funny a little bit as the sum of numbers over the number of numbers so quite simply add all your numbers together divided by how many numbers did you have that will give you the mean but however in some cases this data is not given to you quite so easily for example there's something called a frequency table and it could tell you that for example these are your values and they have frequencies let's say the values we are dealing with are, let's say 10 12 and 15. they could tell you for 10 we have 25 12 we have maybe 20 15 400. instead of writing this 10 in 25 different places 12 in 20 different places and 15 in 400 different places you can use this simple table to express it and this frequency f here represents how many times a particular variable occurs so if your data is given to you in terms of these what you simply have to do is that your mean becomes the summation of each of the frequencies times their you know x variable over the summation of f so to become this times this this times this this times this add them all together divided by the sum of f and that would give you your mean so either one you use you get your mean next up median median is simple median is the middle number after arranging all the numbers you are dealing with in order that means for example you are giving a bunch of data five one four two three find the median the middle number because you are five your first thing to be to say the middle number is four obviously but no not quite it must be arranged either you know ascending or descending so one two three four five and now that it is in order i can see my middle number is three see that's all for median then for mode mode simply tells you the one with the highest frequency the one that occurs the most like in this case here 10 occurred 23 times 12 occurred 20 times and 15 occurred 400 times obviously my mode must be 15. please be careful to note that your mode is not actually the frequency but the value carrying the frequency so your mode is not 400 your mode is 15 because it is 15 that happens to appear 400 times try not to mix it up and then last but not least we have range range is simple range is simply the biggest number minus the smallest number for example the biggest number here is 15 smallest is 10 
x minus 10 is 5. You see, this is very, very simple. And this is the basics of statistics that we need to know before we move on to measures of dispersion. So if this is actually gotten down, let's see how questions on that topic could be brought and how best we can answer them. So as usual, we are going to open our O3 screws jam app and um do our bits of analysis answer some questions learn how they work and after that you could of course go on your own and answer more of them all right so my first question i'm given the table and i'm told to find the median age of the frequency distribution in the table i'm going to draw my table here there is age and then there's number of people. So the first age is 20. There are three. There's 25 and there are five. 30 to one. 35 to one. 40 to two. And 45 to three. And to find the median. We know median is middle number of ranging ascending order or descending order if i look at this case now the edges are already in order so i don't have to rearrange but where should the middle be first things first how many people are there three plus five is eight nine ten twelve fifteen and we know that obviously if there are 15 people the middle is number eight because you know Okay, let's just do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So let's go in groups. Let's take away 4 on this side. 4 on this side. Take away 3 on this side. 3 on this side. And so you can see that's the middle. That means the 8th position. Where is my 8th position here? I could go from either direction. 3 plus 5 is 8. That means my 8th position lies in this range. If I come from here, 3 plus 2, 5, 6, 7. So I know that number 8 must be within here. And what value is here? 25. That simply means that my median is number 25. Is that okay? That's option B. Um, if you like to know what number it should be, in case you cannot start taking them out one by one. You simply see the number of variables, which was 15. Because it's an odd number, we add 1 to it and divide by 2. That's a number 2, which tells us that the person we are looking for is at position 8. Do you see? It doesn't tell you what the median is. Be careful. It doesn't tell you what the median is. The median is not 8. It tells you what position to go to so you can actually find that median. So that's how that works. Let us proceed. The next one is from the year 2002. This is question number 27. All right, that's just seven. Question number seven from 2002. And it's asking us for the range of the data. And the data we have k plus two, we have k minus three. We have k plus 4, we have k minus 2, we have k minus 5, k plus 3, k minus 1, and k plus 6. All right, now let's be smart. We know range is biggest minus smallest. Now, obviously, what must the biggest be here? In some of them, we are adding, in some we are subtracting. In which of them do we add the biggest number? Obviously, right here. I mean, my range must be k plus 6, which is, you know, the biggest number, minus. Then the smallest one, where do we subtract the smallest, or rather, where do you subtract the biggest number from? Here is k minus 1. Here is k minus 5. If you look at this is 2, this is 3. So obviously, at k minus 5, I'm removing the biggest number. So my range is k plus 6 minus k minus 5. So let's open all the brackets. I'll be k plus 6 minus k 
minus times minus 6 plus 5. K minus K is 0, 6 plus 5, 11. And my range is simply 11, option A. You see, this is actually rudimentary. It is so simple. Next up, from the year 1997, question 46. This one says, the following are the scores of 10 students in a class in a test of 20 marks. What is the modal score? Mode, which one occurs most? So let's just write down the scores. There's 15, 16, 17, 13, 16 again, 8, 5, 16 again, 19, 17. That is what I think we should know what the mode is because only one number appears three times. The next closest is 17, which appears just twice. So what's my modal score? The one that appears most is 16. And again, remember, it appeared three times. Three is the frequency, not the modal score. The modal score itself is 16. And that is option C for this question. So you see, it's so simple. We don't have to even waste much time on any question. Now we are at 1998, looking at question 31. For this one, we are told, if M and N are the mid mean sorry, and median, if M and N are the mean and median, respectively of the set of numbers, and the set of numbers is 2, 3, 9, 7, 6, 7, 8, 5. We have to find M plus 2N. M is mean, N is median. Let's find mean first. We know that mean is summation x over n. So let's add up the numbers. That's 2 plus 3 plus 9 plus 7 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 5. How many numbers are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. See? It's that simple. 2 plus 3 is 5. Plus 9 is 14. Plus 7 is 21. Plus 6 is 27. Plus 7 is 34, plus 8 is 42, plus 5 is 47. And that's 47 over 8. And okay, let's just use our calculator over here. But if I haven't do that, you should also notice that in the question is specified to the nearest whole number, which means that I don't actually have to put my answer in decimal places. I'm getting 5.875, but the nearest whole number here must be 6. So I'll leave my mean as 6. That means M is 6. Then for your median, remember, median is middle number after arranging in descending or ascending order. So I have to recategorize this. That will give me 2 coming first, 3 next, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, then 9. I want to get the median. How many numbers are there? Eight, which means where can my median be? Middle. There's this to this, this to this, this to this. Then I have two numbers at the middle. Well, very easy. Please note, if you ever have, you know, an even number of data, and your median is between two at the middle, simply find the average of those two. That's six plus seven over two. Six plus seven is thirteen over 2 and 13 over 2 is 6.5 so we can approximate this to 7 and as such we want to find m plus 2n as a matter of fact let's not over approximate yet let's just leave it as 6.5 so if we come here m is 6 plus 2 times 6.5 and that's why i did not approximate yet because when I multiply here, 2 times 6.5 gives me a whole number, which is 13. But if I had already approximated here to 7, then 2 times 7 would have been 14, which is now a whole different number and could cause errors. So please note, it's always best to approximate at the end of your solving, not the beginning. 
So it would have actually been based. So take 5.875 and put it here just like that. And then approximate after I'm done, not before I'm done. But it all works out here. This times this is 13. And when I add, that gives me 19 to the nearest whole number, which is option A. So that's how that works. Very easy and straightforward. Okay, let's keep moving forward. Let's keep moving forward. This time we are going to the year 1999. Looking at question 48. This one tells a story. It says, a student calculated the mean of five numbers as 45.3. Created the mean of five numbers, sorry. As just 45, no point 0.3. As just 45. That means mean of five numbers. The mean was 45. And basically the number of numbers was 5. Then when check, rechecking his working, he discovered that his total was short by 20.5. Now, where does the total come in? If you remember, in mean, it is the sum of the numbers over the number of numbers. This sum of numbers is your total. That means in his calculation, for the mean to be 45, let's get the sum he must have used. If I cross multiply, that means the sum he must have used is 45 times 5, which is about 2 to 5. So this is the sum he used in order to get 45 as the mean. But what the details of my question tells us is that this total was short by 20.5. That means 20.5 was supposed to be added to it. It was short by. If they said it was over by, then I will remove that 20.5 from the total he used. Of course, it was short by. I'm going to add. So let's just say summation x in or new will be 2 to 5 plus 20.5. And obviously, 2 to 5 plus 20.5 gives you 245.5. Notice no new data was added. It's still just five numbers. So, of course, the new mean must become the new sum over n, which is 245.5 over 5. And as usual, let us just press our calculator. This is 49.5. One, which taking a look at our auto discourse jump back is the option C. So please note in some questions on main, they give us stories like this, and we simply have to do the necessary analysis. So it's not difficult at all. All right, let's move to 2002, question 20, rather question 10, and see what we have there. This one is almost like the previous, it tells us. If the mean of six numbers is 60, if the mean of six numbers is 60, so the mean of six numbers is 60. If the mean of the first five is 50, so when the numbers are five, the mean is 50. You want to find the sixth number in the set. It's very easy, actually. What do you do? When there is six, there must be a total. And when there are five, there must be a total. Now, the difference between those two totals will tell me what was added in the interim. So let's find the first total and say, as we know, mean is summation x over n. And so summation x must be mean times n. So let's say summation x2 for, you know, this one here will be mean 60 times 6 which is 360, Why summation x1 will be the mean 50 times 5, which is 250. Automatically, to get the number that was added becomes the summation x2 minus summation x1. 360 minus 250, that is 110. And that is option C. So you do see, the questions are as simple as can be. 
All right. Let's find one that has to do with get calculating your mean from a table. This is our three question 40. This one gives us a very, very simple table. Here we have values and frequencies. Now the values are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The frequencies are 1, 2, 2, 1, 9. Find the mean. Please note, we said if ever you have a group of data like this, your mean becomes summation fx over summation f. So these are my x values, these are my frequencies f. So let's find these out. There are two ways to do this, of course. A very, very simple way could be to create a whole new column in the table by yourself and say, and by the way, this is not always applicable in your jam, of course, but you just do it quickly to avoid wasting time. Find the multiples. 0 times 1 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. 9 times 4 is 36. And you see, now I know fx. And summation simply means to add. So let's add them up. 0 plus 2 is 2 plus 4 is 6. Plus 3, 9. 9 plus 36 is 45. So this is fx. Then the summation of my frequencies will give me 3, 5, 6 plus 9 is 15. So you see, without much ado, I know that summation fx, adding all my fx together, was 45. And summation f, adding all my frequencies together, was 15. And dividing must give me 3, which is option A. So you see, without much effort, without more stress, we are simply done. And um, let us solve just one more question before that drive this in. And we shall actually call it a day on measures of central tendency. This one gives us another table. And by the way, this is 2001, question 40. So we have score, we have frequency. In this one, the scores are 4, 7, 8, 11, 13, and 8. The frequencies are 3, 5, 2, 7, 2, 1. We are being told to find the square of the mode. The square of the mode, what occurs most. To find what occurs most, look at your frequencies. Which of these frequencies is the highest? Obviously, the highest frequency is 7. But I insist, please note, your frequency is never ever truly your answer. You are dealing with the values and not their frequencies. So, which value appears 7 times? That is 11. So, my mode is 11 not 7 please not make that mistake but they wanted the square and so that's 11 times 11 which is 1 to 1 and as we can see is option b so you see this is how this works it's very very simple unless you make mistakes then you are assured of your answers no difficulties so as usual i will leave us with a couple questions for us to try on our own. You can get all these questions on your O3 Schools Jam app. And of course, there are other questions, not just the ones I'm giving to you. Do well to solve as many as possible. Do not solve just a few and think you are ready for your exams. Solve as many as possible. So that no question you ever see would confuse you. Okay, for a sixth one, let's try and find the sixth one. Um, yeah, and then three, question forty-seven. So do well to attend those questions, and as usual, you can comment your answers, problems you have while solving anything whatsoever that might have played your solving. 
beneath this video right here so thank you for watching remember to like the video subscribe to this channel to also see many other videos explaining various topics across different subjects for your jam preparation and of course you must get your o3 schools jam app to ensure you can try study and prepare properly for your jam my name is Athanasius. I want to thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you learned a lot.